Hi there, and welcome to Cooking with Rebecca. My name is Rebecca, and today I will be making honey sweetened peanut butter dog cookies. This recipe is from caninejournal.com, and it is considered to be organic, all natural, limited ingredient, and free of byproducts. This is a holistic recipe, and this recipe is great for dogs with sensitivities and still tastes delicious. Before we get started, let's define some terms that are important to know when cooking holistically. First, what is organic? Well, it describes ingredients of animal or plant origin in which synthetics such as chemical pesticides, antibiotics, or hormones are not used in production or harvest. What does it mean to be all natural? All natural describes ingredients from animal or plant sources, either unprocessed or only physically processed, not chemically or synthetically processed. What does limited ingredient mean? This is used to describe diets that contain one protein and or one carbohydrate source. And lastly, what, are, what about byproducts? Byproducts are products that are produced or left over from the principal product. An example of this is beet pulp. All right then, let's move on to the recipe. Okay, to make this recipe, you're definitely going to need a few items. Uh, first, you're going to need measuring cups. You're gonna need one set for dry ingredients and one set for wet ingredients. You'll also need a set of tablespoons. You'll need a mixer, a large mixing bowl with the attachment. You'll also need a small mixing bowl, um, and this will be for the wet ingredients to start off. You'll also need cookie cutters of your choice. Today we're going to use dog bones. Parchment paper to line your cookie trays with. And then you will also need cooling racks for when they come out of the oven. Aside from filtered water uh, for the recipe, you're also going to need the rest of your ingredients. Uh, today, these are all organic. So we have oats. Uh, you can use steel cut or rolled, whichever you prefer. We also have brown rice flour, unsweetened applesauce, peanut butter, honey, as well as a brown egg. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do for this recipe is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Um, that way the oven can be preheating while you prepare the ingredients for baking. Okay, so 350 and we're all set. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by putting all of our wet ingredients into this large mixing bowl. Um, and attach it to the mixer and mix them all together. So there's that, and then we'll attach the attachment. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing on the list is to get out an eighth cup of water. Um, we're gonna use half of our one quarter measuring cup and we are gonna use filtered water. So we'll do this, and then we're gonna pour it right into our bowl. And you can set that measuring cup aside because you'll use it again. The next thing you're gonna add is the applesauce. So we're gonna open this, we need three tablespoons. So use your tablespoon measurer. Put it right in. The next thing on the list is to add your egg. So you're actually gonna crack this in a small bowl. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna add it right into the mixing bowl. Okay. 
Okay, the next thing we're gonna add is the peanut butter. So we're gonna open the peanut butter. This can be a sticky mess. With this peanut butter, you do want to mix it before you use it. Um, natural peanut butter is supposed to separate when it sits on the shelf. Um, so you just want to mix it to recombine everything. Perfect, almost done. All right, that looks good. Okay, and it's pretty soft, so you can actually just pour it right into your measuring cup. We need one cup. So I'm just gonna pour it in here. It'll be almost your whole jar here, it looks like. Expedite things here with a fork. <laughs> Okay, perfect. And you're going to just pour that right in your mixing bowl here. Do the best you can to scrape it out of your cup measure. That way it's accurate. Perfect. Okay, and the last ingredient to add is honey. This also pours nice and easily. Uh, you need one quarter cup. So we're just going to pour it right in here. All right. And in the mixer it goes. Okay. Okay, then what we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna mix all of the moist ingredients together. So we're gonna raise the mixer here, and this is gonna be loud, but we're gonna mix it basically until it's all thoroughly combined. good. So you guys can see what it looks like. So it's pretty well combined, pretty moist. Okay, so we're going to leave the wet ingredients in this bowl um, because of the, for the rest of the recipe we're going to actually add the dry ingredients directly into it um, as we're mixing things along. Um, so let's put together the dry ingredients. Next, we're going to start off with adding the dry ingredients. The first ingredient that we're going to add are the oats. Um, for this ingredient, we need two cups. Get our measuring cup here. And perfect. We're going to add this right into this smaller bowl here. And there's our two cups. And then the other ingredient we're going to add 
that is the brown rice flour. You need one and one half cups total. I'm gonna do this in one half cup measurements, just fits in the bag easier. Perfect. Then you're actually going to take part of this um, at a time and you're going to mix this in with the wet ingredients until you gradually have a dough formed until it's all completely mixed together. So I'm going to raise the mixer again. I'm going to turn the mixer on and then you're supposed to add the ingredients as you mixing. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. I'm going to mix the rest of the ingredients in. a little bit of extra moisture um, and you can just use a little bit of water just to kind of sort of keep the dough together. Um, it does look like you do need to add just a little bit of water. This dough is just a little bit dry. We're going to let it mix and then we're going to add a little bit of water. Nice and sticky. 
It's also all over the counter. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we're gonna unattach the attachment here. Put that aside. And so you have a dough that looks like this. Nice and sticky, um, but still easily moldable. We're gonna actually push the mixer aside here. Okay, and then we're gonna prepare to put this on the cookie sheets for baking. Now we're gonna line two baking sheets with parchment paper. Just enough to fit the tray. This will just help it prevent from sticking. And then we're gonna do two different ones. Um, we're gonna use the doggy cookie cutter, um, the dog bun cookie cutter, and we'll do that for uh, a part of a tray and then for the rest of them just to kind of expedite the recipe. We're gonna just do little rounds um, at a time. All right, so we're gonna start with the little rounds. So basically you're just gonna take your dough um, and you're just going to roll it into little um, tablespoon size little rounds. And then once you put them on the cookie tray, um, you're actually going to just sort of flatten them out with the palm of your hand. Perfect. You can make them bigger, but they will take more baking time. You want to space them one to two inches apart on your cooking tray. It is pretty sticky and a little bit greasy, so you might want to wear um, some gloves, latex gloves. That'll help keep your hands clean. All right. Dough is perfect. Okay, we're gonna do one more row on this tray. So I'm not sure how many cookies this recipe will make. It also depends on how big you make your cookies. Um, but it looks like it'll probably make a few dozen if you keep them about this size. Okay, so this tray is done. I'll try to do some 
doggy cutout one. So I think the best way to do this is to make just a flat mold in your hand um, and then use the cookie cutter to cut out the shape. And then you're just going to want to gently push out the little bone shape. Perfect. That seemed to work very well. So just make a layer in your hand, kind of form it together. And cut it out. Kind of peel off the leftover dough there, just back into the bowl, it makes it easy. And do the same thing here. What's really great about these cookies also is um, once they're baked, you can store them in the freezer um, for two to three months, um, but that way they don't go stale. And since these are a little bit bigger, we're just going to do two rows of these, probably. A couple more. <coughs> Excuse me. make them too thick otherwise they will take quite a bit longer to bake. Okay, it's so the last one here. Perfect. Okay, so these are just about ready to put in the oven. Uh, the oven is definitely preheated now, so we'll go ahead and stick these in there.
Okay, so we're just gonna bake these on the middle racks of the oven. <laughs> that way they bake evenly. Okay, so now that they're in the oven, we are going to set the timer for exactly 15 minutes. Um, and then when it's done, we are going to go ahead and check them out and see what they look like. Okay, so now our cookies are done. They were in the oven for about 15 minutes. Um, they are now cooled. And um, they actually turned out really, really well. They're nice and golden brown. They're super crunchy. Here's our little dog bones. They turned out really cute. Um, so now what we're gonna do is see what our canine friends think of these. Okay. Come here. Hi, Hoff. Would you like a cookie? Good boy. Oh, he likes the cookies, doesn't he? Okay, let's just start here. Good boy. Come here, Tula. Two very satisfied customers, obviously. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.